Well, I wish I could play this old guitar. I've been trying for a long, long time. All them old boys I started out with. Well, they're all playing just fine. But I can grab me a handful of eco and drag it on over to A. But after B, it's beyond me how to take it any other place. Cheap guitar versus expensive guitar. We have that. The question is: Is an expensive guitar going to make you play better? No, it's not going to make you play better. Um, uh, as they say, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? You practice, uh, and you can practice on well, this right here. This this probably costs fifty bucks on eBay. It's a marquee, probably an old '60s Japanese thing. Don't mm -hmm. you think? Yeah. Yeah, definitely Japanese. I mean, you can, you know, it's all about learning, and and, and it's and actually got kind of a cool neck on it. It's, it's okay. It's, it's beefy, chunky. Yeah, it, but it's a short scale. Beefy, chunky, funky. It's beefy and chunky, and and uh, but it's a, a shorter scale neck, so it's not going to tune really good, obviously. But uh, you can you can learn on these guitars, and, and they sound plinky, which is. It's like, it's, it's like a listen to old fifties records. Guitar, folks. Fifty. <laughs> and, and ch yeah, check 50 this out. Dollars. Check it out. It's got a whammy bar. Here. It's got a little piece of plastic right here. Fifty bucks. <laughs> Fifty bucks. Come on. Fifty bucks. If you can't learn on that, well, then it's your fault. All right. So yeah. don't go spending five thousand dollars on a, a gold top Les Paul, thinking it's going to make you play better. Only you can make you play better. Yeah, you just got to work at it, you know. It, they're nice guitars are nice, but uh, they're not necessarily necessary. No. 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 I mean, I, you know, when I sit around the house playing on my couch, I got this little Harmony Rocket. And I just... Yeah. You know, $500 guitar. Mm -hmm. Tysco's are great. Tyscos are great. Some of them, yeah. That's what. Well, hey, why don't we talk about that guitar? Yeah, this guitar here. Because uh, somebody had asked had asked about this guitar. This, this guitar. guitar is. Uh, I've been playing this for probably thirty years. Uh, it is. It's just I. I screwed it all together. You know, I bought parts. I found this neck that was an oversized neck, and I. I, I like. And I wanted to go for kind of a lap steel sound. So, and then I found this body that's just god-awful heavy. So it's a really heavy guitar. I, I couldn't play that guitar. It's really heavy. Um, and then I uh, got these two. These are Tysco Del Rey's from the early 60s. I got these off of a T4 or an L4 Tysco. There were four of these pickups on it. found it in Santa Monica, California. Took the guitar home, and I thought, well, man, this guitar sounds pretty good just on its own. Maybe I'll just try to play it. And then the uh, neck fell off. Uh, believe it or not, it's a true story. <laughs> the neck actually went. Boom. I still have nightmares about that. Um, but uh, so I just stripped it down, took all the parts off of it, and these are the Rycooter David Lindley pickups. Other guys that kind of popularized these pickups. These are the real deal from the early '60s. Now there are some repros out there now. Uh, who uh, Lowler? Yeah. He's got a really good. I've tried some of those. They're really good. I I recommend them. 
Uh, but if you get an old Tysco, you got to make sure you get the right Tysco pickup because Tysco made a lot of really underpowered pickups, which like ohm wise came out to like five or something. Yeah, I don't know. These are up more like a humbucker, where they're like seven point five or something like that. Uh, so they don't feed back. They they will feed back at a high volume, but but you can still you know they still have they have plenty of output. They got the output to where they're not gonna. gonna so anyway, so I, I screwed those on there and I and I put one of these. Well, that's who did that? I did that. And Don't make fun no, of me. No, no. I mean, it's actually pretty good. It, this you is, think that's good? Well, well, I think that's like uh, Joe Glazer calls it the best butter knife technology he's ever seen in his life. <laughs> but it works. <laughs> well, so yeah. this guitar is not actually screwed onto the top. You have dug out a little bit I, I to drop a, it in. I took a router. I got really drunk one night yeah. and took a router, and obviously. But right down here was the problem because I I like these Telecaster bridges. I think they sound great, and you, you're a lot, and you can uh, you've got a barrel intonate for them. intonate them much easier. Yeah. Uh, and they're on this big chrome plate, which I think adds a little bit of resonance to it and gives me that kind of lap steel sound. And then I had to take a, a steel. Uh, saw actually Joe Glazer did and cut this out to fit this pickup in there. Everything down here is just like a Telecaster, I, and I've been just been playing this forever. I play country music on it. I play rock and roll on it. I play whatever on it. Uh, and other than its weight, it's probably my uh, number one. It's it's the guitar I find that I use more. Than any other. Guitar. I think you're playing that guitar behind Little Jimmy Dickens. Little that, Jimmy Dickens <laughs> on that video. Uh, this was I played Carnegie Hall. Everybody, I actually played at Carnegie Hall, and uh, it was uh, uh, Vince Gill took the uh, Grand Ole Opry on the road uh, to. Uh, uh, we did this thing where all the Opry stars came out. Little Jimmy Dickens, you know, all these people. So I got to play on Carnegie Hall, and I got to play "May the Bird of Paradise Fly Up Your Nose" uh, yeah. on Carnegie Hall with the little Jimmy Dickens, and that guitar part that I'm playing actually was originally done with a delay. You know, you get, da, 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 right. da, 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 da. but I could never get my delay set right, so I actually did it by doing a cross picking thing with my right finger, where it sounds like I'm yeah. using a delay. So you can watch that, and and that's really one of my biggest. Claim to fame, so I think it's playing yeah. May the Bird of Paradise Fly Up Your Nose at <laughs> yeah. Carnegie Hall. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Yeah. You practice. <laughs>